Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to Sheltered 2 Perfect Start Full Game, Episode 5. Okay, today, later on in the video, we are going to be getting the battery bank. Now, the battery bank is a core and important component of your shelter. Okay, so tomorrow we've got rain. Uh, we've currently got 93 water. Water management, as you know from my previous videos, I'm obsessed with it. Uh, I am a water hoarding maniac, and there is a reason for that, and you will see as the summer hits that it is an essential component of your early game development. Now, here we are in the shelter. We're just checking a few things, hovering over. We sped up time a little bit, and uh, as I said, what we'll be doing is getting the battery bank put into our shelter over the course of this video. Now, we've had an encounter, so let's go and check it out. Uh, what kind of encounter is it? Okay, so we've encountered other survivors. Okay, first clue, angry face. Okay, so this means it's going to be someone that is highly unlikely that we're going to be able to trade with. We can try at 27%. Trading's not what I had in mind. I was thinking of just taking what I wanted. Okay, so now we have combat. Okay, now the combat, aim for the head and go for melee. So click on the person, attack and melee. Unless, of course, you had weapons, you could use those. Okay, so the person is now dazed, and we want to go again for another headshot, so attack and melee. Okay, that was a miss, so now we're going to go on to our next person, so our shelter leader, our faction leader. Again, melee, to the head, two is subdued. Okay, so we can now take everything that they have. Uh, we haven't killed them, so we're not going to get a negative buff to our mental health, and we can move on. So we subdued the person, we took all their stuff, and on we go. So remember, aim for the head and melee. And even if you've got weapons, so baseball bats, whatever, again, same rule applies, melee, aim for the head, try and subdue them. Uh, later on, you might become a uh, murderous McMurder head. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, and those that have watched my live streams will be well aware that I became a mass murderer. Okay, so again, general maintenance, you'll find as you play the game, I don't really need to say it, um, but you do need to maintain everything. Okay, so now we're gonna have a quick look at tier two, and here it is, battery bank. So we already found the blueprint and we uploaded it to our drafting table. Now you have to find the blueprint first. Now the good thing is the early game mechanics make it fairly easy to find, and you wanna be making sure that you're doing it with the person with the best chance of making a high integrity item. So intelligence dictates what percentage the item will have for its integrity when it is finished. Early game doesn't really matter a huge amount, however, always try and use your most intelligent person. Now they're back, so we do a take all. We're at 1,043 out of 1,400, so our storage capacity is still okay-ish. Uh, we don't need to expand it just yet. Now, whenever someone comes back from an expedition, what's the first thing you need to do? You need to make sure that they shower, uh, that they get their hygiene back, and then they go and they have some food. Okay, so. Again, drink water, that's something else that tends to be fairly essential when you've come back from an expedition. Uh, so there we go. And again, cycle through your different people. So we can recycle stuff now that we brought back from our expedition. So recycle the games console, the old wooden toys, and uh, the clothing, the frying pan, the old tire, the scrap piles, the microwave, and there we go. There's quite a bit of stuff there. It's gonna take a while. Uh, but get that recycled. Don't worry, later on, we're able to build a recycling machine. And again, it needs to be one of your early game focuses. So early game focuses uh, are things that make your life a hell of a lot easier as the game develops. And one of those is the recycling machine, but we'll get onto that uh, on another video. Okay, so again, we're maintaining everyone's stats. So again, showers, uh, drinking water, getting their hygiene, uh, because you don't want to consume food uh, if down on the left hand corner there that shower bar is orange because what you will do is you'll get the chance of food poisoning. Uh, you start with some anti-memetic pills that you can take if you get food poisoning so it's not the end of the world uh, if you do get food poisoning because you can just take an anti-memetic and that will get rid of it or you can let them vomit all over your shelter make a huge mess and then clean it up. Uh, that is also an option. And what actually, while this is going on in the background and we're just maintaining stuff, uh, what I will also talk about is what I call the absolute desperation model. 
Now the absolute desperation model is if water becomes a very low resource. Now if water becomes a very low resource you want to do two things. You want to make a sink and you want to make sure you've got soap. Now the reason for this is you are going to let your uh, dwellers become disgusting individuals. So you let their hygiene go to awful, you let them wet themselves, so go to the toilet themselves instead of going to a toilet because that conserves water. Uh, then use the sink uh, which will recycle back into your water uh, contain contaminated unit and clean it uh, so it will preserve water and they'll still be able to eat so they'll be able to eat they'll be able to drink water and sleep and then hygiene will sort be the worst thing they'll all be dirty but at the end of the day you will save a huge amount of water if water is becoming a desperate resource for you so that is the best way of doing it if the resources become super duper restricted okay right George here needs some sleep so we can uh, send him to a bed after he's uh, done his deconstruction work. Right there, we've got someone at the door, so have we hit the jackpot? I don't think so. 332111? No. Go away. And also you don't really need to uh, get people into your shelter in the early game. I mean we've already got one extra person so that's fine. Um, and that's what you tend to do. So we've got an intelligence point to spend here. So what do we want to spend it on? So knowledge of anatomy, passive skill, um, advanced CPR training, resourceful healing. Again, these are all entirely your choice, uh, what you spend the skill points on. Now do bear in mind, you will not be able to max out all of these. It's highly unlikely, um, unless you have a very uh, high cap person, which again is unlikely. Okay, so we've got that deconstructed. Now, just tapping escape, Just this is kind of a mental note, just remember to save your game. It's not something people tend to think about too often, but uh, as you're playing along, save fairly frequently, because things can go wrong very, very quickly, uh, and it is a good idea uh, to save your game fairly uh, often. Anyway, with that little public service announcement out of the way, let's get uh, back into the shelter and get things back to uh, where we want them to be. Okay, so again, you're monitoring the growth of everything that you are doing. Uh, so plants, you need to just keep an eye on those to see when they're ready to harvest. Again, your traps as well at the top. Uh, you don't necessarily need to um, harvest them every time you catch. Uh, you can leave the rabbit there uh, until you decide that it's time to harvest it. Uh, so that's a perfectly viable option for you. Uh, so everyone's busy at the moment. Our battery bank is uh, charging, so that means we are drawing uh, more electricity, generating more electricity than we need, which means the battery bank is charging. Now the battery bank uh, later will come as a complete lifesaver as we build up these wind turbines. Because each wind turbine obviously generates an amount of electricity, but only when there is wind. So when there is no wind, the battery banks serve as your backup so that you are able to continue having electricity eventually without using the generator. Uh, now there is a blueprint for a industrial generator. Again, that comes much later in the game and it is a much more effective power generator. So again, that is an option. Uh, now again, maintenance, very important. You need to continuously make sure that everything is um, in a good maintained state. Uh, those that have played Sheltered like I have, and uh, to be fair, I have a bit of exposure to Sheltered too, will understand this anyway. It's uh, kind of like stating the obvious. Uh, now, both of those plants need watering. Again, we're expecting rain tomorrow, uh, but we are down to 83 water, uh, so not great. Uh, but again, not terrible. Okay, so just looking around at different bits and pieces. Again, you'll find you'll do this as well. Um, so then you go back, you decide, right, what can I craft? What do I need to craft? What should I ideally craft? They're all the different questions you'll be asking yourself. Uh, so let's get a bit of extra light. Uh, the only question is, where do we want to put it? Do you want to put it in there? Uh, that's over an existing light, uh, put it over there, put it over there. So you can play around with all the different slots uh, to decide where you want to put it. And again, having light over your workbench is a good idea because it improves uh, crafting speed, not by a huge amount. And to be honest, you can do it much better with skills, but at the same time, it's worth doing. Now, something else that is also worth mentioning uh, is where I've placed the stairs directly under the default stairs 
uh, you can move the location to the middle. Now we built that cable so we can build another uh, wind turbine. So, oh, actually, of course, not another. This is the first one, isn't it? Okay, so we're building our first wind turbine. So another little piece of the video that I didn't realize was going to be a first because I'm so used to the fact that I've done several hundred hours of live streams for Shelter 2 uh, that all of this has been done, dusted, seen before. Of course, if you're watching just this series, uh, then this is a first. So your wind turbine is what you call an ex essential power generation device for your shelter, which takes your reliance away from fuel because fuel can become a scarce resource and you can end up running out. And of course, if you run out and the power goes off, your little freezer room won't work anymore and your food will begin to spoil, which is something that you do not want to happen. So there we go. You can see I just quickly, briefly went to the temperature and our freezer room is sat at zero. Now, these guys are complaining it's cold. Well, we're in spring. The weather is going to be warming up. But the question is, do we build any halogen heaters uh, to warm up the shelter. Now there we go, it's generating two, oh it's still going up, so that's very good, it's quite windy. Uh, that should boost the charge for the battery bank as well, because of course our Jenny is running on fuel. Uh, so let's go, see what else we can build. So scroll down, uh, is there anything else we need? So as I was talking about the halogen heater, what you can do is ensure that your bedrooms are nice and cozy. So we put that partition wall in, um, between where the beds are and where the battery bank is. So what you can do is you put this in and what it should do is it should maintain that room at 20 degrees Celsius. So that's what you want to set it at, 20. It's a nice comfortable temperature, it's not too hot, it's not too cold and they will be uh, much happier for it. So our plants are ready, so go and harvest. The other one's only 59% ready, uh, but at least we can get one of them harvested. Uh, that's some more food, of course, for the shelter. And there we go, Catch is now building it. Oh, we got some peas, we've got five in total. Now to make pea soup, of course you need water. So let's set up another expedition. So we'll send off Alistair and George. Uh, they're both okay, their stats are good. So give them a bag, give them a bedroll, and uh, have a look, what else do we want to send? Okay, weapon would be good, but of course at the moment we don't really have the strength for it. Uh, so it's gonna be one of the old knuckle duster jobs which is fine, early doors. Um, but as you progress in the game, you will want to train strength and all the other skill sets as well uh, to improve your chances when you're out on expeditions because you don't want your people dying. And um, I actually saw a recent comment uh, on one of my other sheltered videos in relation to the weakened uh, status. Now, I presumed it was only from when someone gets knocked out. Um, so they get knocked unconscious. Basically, they've had they've died-ish and they need to be revived with CPR and then they have the physical weakened status of the heart for about 15 days. What I didn't realize was if you don't give rations uh, to your guys when you send them out on an expedition, they can uh, get the weakened status because they've got no rations. So they're basically dying as they're going around searching uh, the wasteland. Never happened to me because I always use rations, but just be aware that when you do an expedition, make sure that you have enough rations for your people to get from the beginning to the end. And also you may want to add additional rations if you decide to change your route midway uh, to go and check out something else that you've uncovered. That's just so you've got enough rations to extend the route and then still get back to the shelter with enough of a supply. Okay, so this church, we've never vi visited it, uh, so we could go and visit. There we go. So they'll search there. And what we'll do is we'll search around the edge. Uh, we have visited the scrapyard. So the question there is, do we want to go north or do we want to go south? Again, this will be down to personal preference. Or, of course, what you can do is just loop back after one location. So we're going to use seven rations. And as you can see, I've given seven. Uh, well, it's automatically given seven. We've got 19 left in the shelter. Uh, so route is already complete. So you would need to remove stuff. However, where you see that lorry, there is literally nothing there. It's just a design element. So originally, when I first started playing the game, I thought, oh, they might do something with those, like an abandoned chassis or something like that for a vehicle. But no, that's not the case. Uh, so we've sent them off on their expedition. 
Uh, let's get Katya to go to sleep. She needs it after she's repaired the bed. And that's another routine to get yourself into as well. So when you send people to sleep, get them to repair the bed, then sleep. And then what you have is always decent integrity uh, for your beds. So there we go, 20 degrees Celsius, set the temperature, close. And then what you can do is you can go onto the room information. Now this has been massively improved subsequently to when I recorded this footage, but as you can see, the temperature is going up. It's now a nice shade of green and it will go to a nicer shade of orange, which means it's nice and comfortable for them. But for today's video, we are approaching the end of episode five. Um, don't forget to drop a like on this video if it's been helpful. Um, always drop a like, you know it's free, it doesn't cost anything, it turns blue after you've clicked on it, and it does help me for distribution of my content to other people so that they can get the benefit from this as well. Now we're at 75% growth for that broccoli, so it's not ready yet, and we've just got another rabbit in the trap. Now that bed needs to be repaired, so let's get it repaired. Didn't follow my own advice, clearly she went to sleep, either through AI or I forgot to get her to repair it first. Bookshelf, also a very important item for skilling up, so get a bookshelf built as fairly early as you can, because uh, you will start finding books in the wasteland, and then you'll be able to get your dwellers to uh, read those books to skill themselves up. But for today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am know-it-all gaming. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I am going to get the rest of this series produced a bit quicker than I have been, uh, because I'm going to start focusing on my episodic series more than my live streams. So until next time, have a great time wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night.